What do I have to say to convince you that all CPU reviews should include 1440p and 4K testing on max settings paired with the top of the line GPU? I'm not saying to do this with every game, up to four games in each of the high resolutions just for a sanity check for the average consumer. Well, there's nothing you can really say. <laughs> you are unconvincible, is that Yeah, what it's, well, I, I don't really know how to say much here without sounding arrogant um but we sort of know what we're doing with this stuff uh and while you might think it's a sanity check it's not um while you might think it's useful information it's not and you're you're kind of doing what we would be accused of doing which is thinking we know best for gamers by giving like a criteria that has to be tested and I don't know, you're, here you're sort of saying just do a couple of games, which I also don't know how that's particularly useful because it would really only, well, it would only cover a couple of games and be relevant for a couple of games. I can't really, there's, I can't go about this subject and explain it any clearer than I did in my video that covered this in depth and explain it from every possible angle. Because Watch Dogs Legion, okay, let's pick that game. What quality setting? So ultra settings with a 4090, who's that relevant for? Like people with a 4090? And then how is that a sanity check? Are you like, see, I told you I could play Watch Dogs Legion on my 4090 with a Core i3. I didn't need the Core i9. Like it just becomes a bit silly. As I explained in the video, it's a CPU review, therefore we're isolating the component we're testing and looking at that. And you can say, again, it's not that realistic. I wanna know what it does at 4K, but you just have to, it, it's not about resolution. It's about the frame rate that you deem acceptable when you're spending money on whatever CPU you have and whatever GPU you have. So if you're like, if you're like me and you go, I don't like the input when it's below 90 FPS, therefore I'm a 90 FPS minimum gamer. I want 90 FPS. Does the CPU enable 90 FPS at 1080p? Yeah, it does. Well, then it'll enable it at 4K. And at 4K, you will be using the quality settings that enables your desired frame rate. It's yeah. that simple, right? And I think with these sort of like, obviously the goal with why people want the 4K ultra settings. Oh, well, look, it G does 30 FPS. Yeah, and they want to they want to show like the GPU limited scenarios so that their you know their choice of not spending money is sort of justified and, and all that. But I think it kind of it does gamers a dis almost a disservice by showing that data. It's one of the rare circumstances where I think showing that data is actually worse than not showing it to some degree because. People sort of, they want to sort of, what's the best way of putting it? It's like you want to have your opinion validated that the CPU doesn't matter. So you can mm. spend the least amount of money and you save money there. You can put all in the GPU because you go, I'm always going to be GPU limited. Let's just look at the GPU limited results. Ah, it's confirmed that I'm GPU limited, there's no difference, mm -hmm. which you probably should already know if you're GPU limited. But then it's kind of, first of all, it ignores all that CPU differences. So if you do run into a game where it's CPU limited, if you're just looking at the GPU limited results, you've looked at the wrong data for your CPU limited comparison yep. where, where it actually matters. And that may be with a future GPU or future games. You may not run, be running into that now, but somewhere down the line, you may, you know, even today, like you could have bought a CPU, a low end CPU for your 4090 and got away with playing your cyberpunks and stuff at, at reasonable high quality settings and not run into something. Then you hit a Hogwarts Legacy type title where you're running it at 4K Ultra with ray tracing and there are areas that are highly CPU demanding. Mm -hmm. And you might have made the wrong choice because you, the only thing you looked at was the GPU, you know, the GPU limited data. And yes, the CPU limited data was still in the review for people to look at, but often people can have a bit of tunnel vision with those things where, you know, they've got in their minds what they're looking for, the GPU limited stuff, they ignore the things that are more relevant and they're just looking at that one thing. And so often with our reviews, we do put a lot of time and effort into thinking about the things that should and shouldn't be shown to people, the things that are the most relevant to make it as simple as possible to understand where the performance differences lie. And there are times where showing things that aren't relevant is actually hard, makes it harder for people to understand yeah, what's going on. for sure. And it's, as I said, with Watch Dogs Legion Ultra at 4K, if it does like 50 FPS, but my minimum is 90. 
it's worthless data because I won't play it ultra at 4K because I find that awful. I hate the input. I won't play that way. So I'll reduce mm -hmm. the visuals to get the GPU to, or enable DLSS or whatever it may be to get that level of performance. So, yeah, I, 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 don't, know, I don't know what other way we can put this that, that uh, you... And you're avoiding, as Tim says, you're avoiding being given useful information. So it's not about which CPU is the fastest. It's about looking at these graphs at 1080p and going, oh, okay, so we've just looked at a dozen games. I've, I've looked at them and studied them all individually. I've got my 12 game average here. You know, the 1300K, it's not really much faster than the 13700K. It's quite a bit more expensive, a lot more power there. The 13700K looks like a really good sweet spot high-end CPU. I think I'll buy that. That's what you're meant to take away from the reviews. Not which one's the fastest or, but I, you know, will the, you know, if I play at 4K, you know, and again, you can look at the 12 game average and you can see what the average frame rate was for the 13700K. And if the 13600K is very close to the Core i5 processor and you're like, well, look, the 13600K enables 90 FPS at 1080p with a high-end GPU across all these games. I'm happy gaming at 30 FPS at 4K. You know, I like that experience. I'm happy with that. Well, then you don't need a high-end CPU. So you can sort of, you can work all this stuff out with that information. Whereas with the GPU limited stuff, as Tim's saying, all of that's masked. You have no idea what's going on. I think and it comes down to people wanting reviews to be showing you the exact number that you'll get. Yeah, which that's, they don't do anyway. It does. It just doesn't do that anyway because you'll use different quality settings, different hardware configurations, yeah, exactly. different memory. You won't be running necessarily, you know, in the case of like the 13RK, you might not be using DDR5 7200 memory because it's not sweet spot memory. It costs $100 more for like 2% more performance. There's a whole heap of factors there to consider. Uh, and really we are looking at the sort of the optimal out of the box configuration for each part, how much difference is there. And you really, like when we look for sweet spot memory, you're looking for that sweet spot, sweet spot CPU. And it's usually yeah. not the 13RK. That's just, I want the fastest of the fastest. and. And again, as Tim said, there's so many other factors as well, like how much more CPU demanding will games be in one year from now? So mm -hmm. although the 13600K and the 13700K are that close in basically all of the games now, will that margin open up? And again, we don't necessarily say to buy parts based on that, but if you can see that there's a reasonable difference now when CPU limited, chances are that'll end up being a better value buy for future more demanding games. Anyway, we can talk about this forever in a day. Yes, I would love to include 1080p, 1440p, and 4K data in every review, but it's a stupid amount of work that ultimately is a waste of time for the most part. And it also makes the reviews much more difficult for the average viewer to digest, as Tim sort of pointed out. It's So rather than confuse them with a whole heap of information that isn't terribly useful, despite the fact that some people think it is, it's not though. But again, that's just me being arrogant or whatever and thinking i know best i guess as a reviewer of more than two decades anyway move on to the next one